Chris, uh, you, you, uh, some while ago you asked me to become president of the YMCA um, of uh, this part of the country, which um, probably most people don't realise there are different YMCA's. Uh, maybe you'd just like to explain a little bit about what YMCA Fairthorn is and, and how the YMCA works. YMCA Fairthorn Group is one of, I think, uh, about a hundred YMCA's uh, throughout England and Wales. So. YMCA has always been locally based and you know the idea being that you know we can be more responsive to local need and uh, and, it, and it's true you know that, that you see different things going on in different YMCA's across the country be, which reflect the communities in which we work um, and and we can be influenced by those communities and and perhaps some, to some, some degree we can influence the communities but but the point is it, it really is a kind of a uh, a partnership I suppose with local people that says this is what a YMCA will do um, there's a there's a often a debate within the YMCA whether we are a youth organization or a community organization and uh, I think we have now uh, resolved the fact that we are in fact a youth-minded community organization <laughs> and um, which which actually I think is uh, to some degree is a good compromise but but it also is because we're really interested in in children, young people, and families, and we're interested in those in a in a community context. We realise that you know, if you don't work within communities, then then what are you as individuals? If you're on the outside, that's not helpful. It's much better to be a part of something. So, so as a, a Fairthorn Group as a YMCA is really con really concerned and interested to promote uh, the value of children, young people, and families within their community. And we have a whole load of uh, different types of projects uh, throughout Hampshire, Hampshire and the Isle of Wight, which are designed uh, to do just that. So uh, facilities right smack in the middle of local communities. So if we can come on to some of those projects um, in a moment or two, uh, would it be true to say that um, Fairthorn is, is one of the, the larger um, YMCA's and, and, and how does that work nationally? Are there about 12 big ones and then lots of smaller ones? Is that, is that about right? <laughs> yeah, it depends, depends which side of the fence you sit on but I, I would say there's, <laughs> there's something like about uh, 10 or 12 of the big YMCA's are, are probably delivering about half the work, half the total work of the YMCA in England and Wales and, and that's you know, measured probably by by income because that's the that's the thing that's easiest to measure. So it's a bit of a rough measure, but yes. So ten or twelve do about half the work. About another twenty do another quarter of the work, and and therefore there's about seventy or so that are that are really quite small and and very local and uh, and very valuable in their local communities. I mean, the YMCA is an international movement as well. It is, yeah. So it was. I mean, it's 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 an old movement, of course. It, we last year we oh no, actually it was the year before now. <laughs> last year's the year that didn't happen, isn't it? But the year before we celebrated our 175th anniversary. So the YMCA was actually founded in London uh, in 1844, but is now in over a hundred countries. I think about I think it's 120 countries uh, around around the world. The 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 newest YMCA is in Kosovo. Um, and the oldest is, of course, in England, because that's where it was founded. And um, being part of that wider movement makes a difference to local work? It makes a huge difference, I think, to be part of something bigger in terms of uh, not only the ideas that we generate, um, but perhaps the, the way in which we are seen. Um, you know, so, so the YMCA is a, is a very well known, it's a very well known four letters. Be interesting if there's four better known letters in the world than YMCA, um, and uh, but certainly from a staff member point of view, I think the the huge amount that we learn, uh, as well as contribute to YMCA work around the world, is fantastic. And wherever they are, YMCA's are delivering to the local need, and that's the exciting and uh, and you well not unique, I suppose, but it's but it, but it is one of the things that's that characterises the YMCA because we're not driven by some world or national agenda. We're driven by what, what comes up from the bottom locally. You, you've mentioned um, Fairthorn, which obviously uh, Fairthorn Manor is the, mm. 
the, the, the place that uh, the group is named after, mm. but the group includes some really stunning projects. Um, uh, in, in what way would you want to illustrate the, the core work, if you like, of the YMCA approach from some of the projects? Well, I think I think I said earlier, you know, it's, it's this being in the heart of communities. So, um, so we would always, of course, flag up Fairthorn Manor. It's the jewel in our crown. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. It's a hundred acres of fantastic countryside where children and young people can run free and have freedom. Um, and and for that reason, it's it's beautiful, and that's why we name ourselves after that. But it, it probably. Uh, doesn't have a purpose unless we are working in these local communities. So we have um, new and old YMCA's. Uh, I think the the oldest bit of our YMCA is down in Portsmouth, which was founded way back in 1851. And we are working right in the heart of Portsea, where we have a, uh, a community branch, which has an early years uh, we have lots of early years work, uh, as you as you know, and early years work is uh, serves two purposes for us. One is it actually, I mean, it provides part of our economic driver, which is always helpful. But also, you know, if you really want to make the greatest difference to a young person's life, we know that you have to work with them in the early years. So, so early years is a really important part. And right in the heart of Portsea, uh, in a really challenging area, we have a, a, a small facility which works with young children and families and it's that point about working with whole families that's really important to us and and i think that you know that, that that's a, a really great example of one of our city center um facilities we have we have in similarly in southampton right in in the heart of newtown which is a, a very diverse part of the city of southampton it's the place where I think it's sometimes described as Southampton's landing place, where new communities often land first. And so because of that, very diverse. And again, we have early years facility, we have youth and community centre there. And just up the road, we have a, a housing project for young people aged uh, 16 to 22, who are, well, we could describe them as homeless. They're not actually homeless because they live with the YMCA. But but if they didn't live with the YMCA, they would be homeless. And uh, they are young people who have, I sometimes describe them as leavers. It's perhaps a bit glib, but they are. They've left something and not necessarily voluntarily. They they may be care leavers. Uh, they There are refugees and asylum seekers. There are young people who, who have left home, uh, not always because they wanted to, perhaps they've been thrown out of home. There are young people who are perhaps in the criminal justice system who are coming out of that. So they are a, a group of young people who don't have the kind of family attachments that, uh, that perhaps my children have. And, uh, and for that reason, I think that, that the YMCA is providing an incredibly important and special place for them to feel safe and comfortable and part of something it's not always easy for those young people to feel part of a community because because they're not they're sort of sat on the outside but we like to try and make them feel part of something and that's part of the process of working with those young people uh, community branches in brand new communities so uh, we have one in in the augusta park uh, development in in andover and it's a, a a branch i think it must be about three three or four years old and uh, again, it's got early years as its uh, as its big um, economic driver, but it's but it's also got a, a youth club, and it's got family work and and all sorts of additional projects for the whole community. But we've built another one of those during <laughs> during the the lockdown. So the the centre at uh, Stoneham uh, Stoneham Park in Eastleigh, which is is now built and will be opening officially at some point as soon as we're allowed to. One of the reasons why I, I, I'm involved and feel very much part of uh, the YMCA, uh, as I experienced it particularly in this part of the world, is not only the historical links with uh, the church and the Christian faith, which of course is the C in YMCA, mm. but it, it's also the expression of the kind of values that you're talking about that everybody can own, you don't have to be a church member or a Christian to to be involved, but you, you can share with the values that lots of people own. I, I wonder if you could say something about the values of the YMCA that sort of shape and inform your work and give you the energy and the vision. Well, yeah, well, we, 
Actually, we've got these uh, these published values. They, 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 they spell the word Wallace. <laughs> Welcoming, active, listening, inspiring, caring and exciting. And those are our published values. Um, and, and, and I mean, what, what we're really clear about is that values count for nothing if you don't have behaviours that match them. Yeah. And so therefore we're interested, particularly with our staff and our volunteers, to make sure that they really do understand those those values. Um, and that they live those. So, you know, we expect people to be uh, to be all those things. I think all our values are really important, and I think that they that they they really stack up to a a, a way in which we try and operate all the time. But we have a purpose as well, which is that right. which is that we believe that all all uh, we believe that everybody should have the opportunity to lead a happy and a healthy life. Yeah. And we find that a really great little. Uh, purpose statement because I mean and I say this to, to everybody on induction that you know if you if you get into work on Monday morning and you find that people are happy and and healthy and that's because of what you're doing then do more of that it is about people at the center of everything we do um, with some outcomes that we want to achieve for them. Do you find that your agenda coheres with the Her Majesty's government on all occasions? <laughs> well well, it, I, it'd be better if you asked them that. Better, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, if you ask the government, where are you interested in people having happy and healthy lives? I mean, they find that rather compelling, I should think, and very difficult to say no. So, and it's very, very broad sense, uh, yes. But of course, of course, we don't agree with lots of things governments, not just this government or other governments, do. But I guess it's emphasis. I suppose all governments would think that they were aiming for happy and healthy lives but I mean I, I'm not sure there's a great deal of evidence at times that everybody is it, you know our statement says that you should have the opportunity for and I think there's an awful lot of young young people families in this country that don't have the opportunity for happy and healthy lives I mean and particularly at the moment I think you know things are so difficult that families uh, that access YMCA services and programs are suffering enormously and uh, um, you know the whole idea of of being locked down in a tower block in, in in Southampton, for instance, where you haven't got a garden to go and walk around or a nice walk. So, so I think there's a huge, a huge disparity, and 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 of course, what we've come to realise is that that many many of our uh, people in our communities, young people in particular, perhaps. They face a life of lockdown. It's not just it's not just a COVID lockdown. Actually, they're locked down. Some of them from birth, and some of them uh, we at the YMCA have to think very very differently about how we how we provide how we how we overcome that continuous locked down state that lots of people feel. Um, and how you've we you've got a way of talking about that, haven't you? I mean, in terms of the. The deficiencies that people may have experienced in life and if you have a certain number of those you really are in a, a lockdown and so the uplift that the government's talking about and the build back that the government would like to see is actually part of the ymca agenda yeah i mean i think i think there's there's sort of several sides isn't there two sides i mean there's the what we call aces the adverse childhood experiences which are which are uh, well things like uh, abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, um, living with a parent with with a, um, a drug or alcohol dependency. That, those, those those there's ten ten aces, uh, but they contribute to really poor health outcomes later in life. Um, uh, but and and we recognise those within within. Uh, within YMCA terms and, and I think lots of people are beginning to really understand that we like to think of ourselves what we call a trauma informed organization if you can if you can at least talk to people about those things and you can recognize that actually and this is a really great statement that anybody anybody can use when thinking about uh, people who have experienced great trauma in their life you've got to stop saying uh, what is wrong with you and you can start saying what has happened to you <laughs> one of those one of those is a uh, is a license to speak and the other is a is an accusation so so though so those are really important but i suppose from our point of view really we're interested in what we call assets and this is a more 
uh, advantaged way of thinking. So this is about what can we provide uh, rather than what have these people got missing. So, so what is it that YMCA provides? What does community provide? Um, and let's just get on and provide it. Stop worrying about what people don't have and start worrying about what we as community, and perhaps that's what the phrase we should think about, what we as community can provide. And that's that's is true for the YMCA, is the church, is uh, any other youth or community organisation. What can you provide? There's internal assets and external. So there's things you do for yourself. And they're for children, really. So, so the things you do for yourself as a child. So... Uh, so one of them is around attitude to learning, uh, you know, so do you have a quest for knowledge? Uh, do you read for pleasure? That's a that's an asset. So they're, they're very simple things. Some of them are external. So some of them are, 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 what, are that that your community and family do for you. Um, my favourite is do your neighbours know your name? If your neighbours know your name as a child, then it's a huge asset. Um, and it's and it's and it's so simple. You can cure the problem if you can if you can intervene very early in young people's lives and that's part of our work around lots of early years work i said right at the beginning you can make the biggest difference to young people's lives in the early years so if you can achieve that that's great but if you can't then what you need to do later in life is provide the the uh, the assets and the advantaged way of thinking that allows people to, to to somehow repair their lives and to move on Chris, I think given what you, you've uh, outlined there, it, it, I would imagine some people would be quite surprised about the research base that uh, the YMCA draws on and, and uses uh, for its work. Um, has that always been the case, that you've been a research-based organisation? Well, I don't, I don't know that we necessarily conduct all the research ourselves. I mean, there's, there's masses of research out there, but we certainly have a... Uh, we, we, we have something called the YMCA way and and we explored two elements of that just earlier on which was the YMCA way requires us to have values and to have behaviors that reflect on those values or, or uh, reflect the values um, and the other there's two other aspects of the YMCA way which says that we shall be evidence-led and that we shall be community-led so if communities want us to do things we'll do them as long as there's evidence that they're good things to do so it's these two these things have to sit in tension with each other over the years the ymca has been involved in lots of interesting initiatives in research um but i guess uh fairthon group as a ymca has really been considering this as a major plank of its of its uh, of its thinking for probably about the past 10 years so what are some of the things that you're most proud of in terms of local projects and stories and people's lives that have been changed well yeah i think it is people's lives that have been changed that that i'm most uh proud of i think uh buildings and and uh and facilities are lovely but but they're only there for people's lives to to make a big dif difference so so yeah, I mean, I you know, I, I can look at lots of buildings and and be uh, immodest and think that was great and that was something I did. But but I but I yeah, I, I've had the great joy of of probably being around the YMCA, our YMCA in 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 this part of the where where probably something in in excess of a million people have been through, and there are stories every every year which i'm really excited about but the but but you know sometimes it's just the really really small things I, I, and i and i talk about i talk about this at our staff inductions all the time about the firsts and the great privilege we have of firsts in the ymca so because we have early years settings we we almost certainly hear children speak for the first time and see them walk for the first time um we probably don't tell their parents that, but 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 it's almost certainly true. Um, we have residential facilities where people have their first night away from home without their family. Uh, we have our young people who live in our housing who might then go on to get their first flat of their own or get their first job or get their first qualification. And I think those are always really exciting things. I think firsts are some of, some of the things which I kind of really love. And which um, is a huge, huge privilege that we're able to see that. And of course, come 
comes with that is huge responsibility because you've got to get that right as well. What troubles you the most? What concerns you the most uh, at the moment uh, in terms of the the lives of young people? And what about the uh, the support for young people, financial support and other forms of support? Well, I think credit and other grants. The young people who live in our accommodation, who are, if you like, some of the most desperate of young people in terms of financially. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's they are they are in a trap. <laughs> I mean, they 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 will uh, receive they receive about two hundred and fifty pounds a month. Actually, that's their on top of their rent. So their rent's paid, so they live off two hundred and fifty pounds a month. Um, Interestingly, a lot of them have got attachment against that for, for whatever reason, you know, for whatever reason they, they so so often they don't even get that. And then by the time they bought some electric and um, and paid some, some other service charges around their accommodation, then, then they're down to, you know, how much is it now? Probably 40 quid a week or something, if that, they're living off. So it's no wonder that they look a bit tatty and they can't afford new clothes. Um, and... Uh, and they and they do all have mobile phones. It's true, but they don't all have smartphones, as everybody would think. But you know, but that costs them money too. Um, and and if you want to get a job, you know, you need to have those things. You can't get a job if you don't, you know, if you don't have a phone to contact people, or you know, and it's all everything's done online these days. So yeah, I mean, it's it really is just absolutely set up against them in terms of financially. And and of course, we as YMCA are able to bridge lots of those gaps for them. Um, it's a poor way to to deal with those young people. It's not surprising that they're, you know, care leavers are. I see it's something like half the people in jail. I think are care leavers. So it's not surprising that those are the leaps that happen, because we don't make the kind of investment in, not not their education, just their life. A care leaver is is a, a young person who is who is cared for by the state. So for whatever reasons, they are not cared for legally by their parents they are cared for by the state so maybe they don't have any parents it maybe their parents were incapable of looking after them they may be uh they may be refugees they may be there there's quite a lot of unattached uh, children refugees actually and uh so so and you know in the past we may have thought of them as living in children's homes or in foster care and so to some degree they are but actually in the ymca we've got lots of care leave care, young people who are in care are actually still live in the ymca because so you're because you're in care until you're an adult. For for care leavers, like I say, I mean, a very common outcome is to go to jail. Uh, and a very uncommon outcome is to go to university. And it's not surprising because, because you know, it's a lot easier to go to jail, actually, than go to university. I mean, that's a sad, sad re- reality of life, but that's the way it is. Chris, how would you like people to pray for you? Uh, you've outlined a significant number of responsibilities and things that, that the YMC are doing, but... Uh, you do carry uh, all that yourself uh, as the senior leader. How would you like people to pray for you and for the work of YMCA? Well, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know that I always understand prayer at all. So it's an interesting point, isn't it? I mean, I, I think, I think I would like people to think not of me, but of of the of the people we serve, because those are the uh, for all the reasons I've just explained. I'm I'm probably doing okay. Um, I've got lots of emotional support and lots of uh, uh, material support, but but I think in terms of uh, the people the YMCA is working for, and and of course all the other people who we're not working for, but but have got issues. I mean, I think that those are the people that deserve your prayers because they need a lot of a lot of support. Some of those people. Okay, Chris. Well, that's uh, a very helpful way of uh, understanding your responsibilities. That. Uh... You want people to pray for those you serve, so that's great.